Good morning. Thank you all for coming and thanks for the invitation. So scientific assessments can be really important resources for communication and education. But to be that, they really have to be accessible to the audiences for whom they're intended. And I think, as we all know, this has not always been the case. But decades of experience by communication professionals went into putting best practices into this national climate assessment. And so I want to review some of those practices for you today. Hmm, where's the, there it is. So it's essential that communication is integrated from the outset. It's not an afterthought. It's really important that a communication perspective is included in all kinds of decisions, everything from what scenarios to use and what illustrations to use and how to present them. And as the senior science writer on this assessment, that was one of my roles, was to ensure that a communications perspective was involved right from the start. So the first ingredient in something like this, of course, is the best, most comprehensive science. We had a team of over 300 authors, uh, the technical inputs that they drew on, we had a federal advisory committee guiding the entire effort, and that's all part of this science. We also had an editorial team, and the expertise of the editorial team included things like how to explain complex science in plain language, and also how to synthesize and summarize in a way that's effective. We also used professional quality photographs, which have not always been used in assessments of this type. And of course, we also had a wonderful graphics design team that knows how to simplify and clarify, making graphics as simple as possible, but no simpler. Now, in an effort that's really successful, all of these come together as an integrated, iterative process. I want to be very clear that this is not sequential. Way too often in the past, scientists will write something and then they'll turn it over to science writers and ask them to translate it, and it really doesn't work that way. It's not sequential. What it is is a conversation, or rather, thousands of conversations. And sure, Don and some of the other authors remember many of those conversations. By conference call, in person, it's an iteration. And it's that series of conversations that lead to a whole that's much greater than the sum of, this parts, of its parts. The science is impeccable and it's credible, but by working with the communications professionals, it comes across in a way that's far more effective than has often been the case. So among the strategies that we used were clear messages and professional photographs. This slide illustrates examples of both of those things. The photograph is obviously from a professional photojournalist who knows how to make a picture speak a thousand words. In the past, that hasn't always been so. The selection of photographs was done by communication professionals using the latest science of science communication. One of the things you'll notice is that there are a lot of people in this report. One of the things we went into it knowing was that climate change is about people. It's not just about ice at the poles. And we know that people, photographs of people, resonate more with people and they're more memorable. So we wanted to use those. You'll notice the sentence at the top. It's a sentence that led off the report and it's probably the most qu widely quoted line of the entire assessment. And it's the combination of language like this and photos like this that bring home the first overarching theme of the report, which is that climate change is happening now. So the second overarching theme of the report is that climate change is affecting Americans. It's affecting us where we live and where we work. And the bulk of the report, of course, illustrates those impacts in every region and every sector. And this photograph, again, with a person in it and this kind of clear language, helps to illustrate that second overarching theme of the report. The third take-home message of the report is that there are important opportunities to tackle it. And the, and the National Climate Assessment illustrated some of those, both in mitigation, that is emissions reduction, and also in adaptation. And again, clear language, images of people, and seeing that these are the kinds of things that are happening now are all part of really good communication practice. So another thing we did, of course, as you saw in Richard Somerville's talk earlier today, was that we used very clear graphics. Here's an example of the global temperature record, and it's shown by decade average. And this makes the point that it's these longer scale, larger trends that really define global warming and not what happens in any individual year. And working with our graphics team, we developed this graphic 
And we also used English units because it's very important for Americans to use inches and feet and degrees Fahrenheit because they simply can't do the math and we don't want to make them try and do that. Another thing that's really important to remember is that most people, much as we would all like to believe that the National Climate Assessment is on everybody's coffee table, most people will only see of this report what they see in the media. So it's really important to make broadcast ready graphics available. So while we were in the White House releasing the report to a group of stakeholders and at a press conference, President Obama was in the Rose Garden talking to broadcast meteorologists from around the country. And so here you see him on the Today Show, and he's talking with America's weatherman, Al Roker, and our uh, broadcast ready graphics that we provided to the media are interspersed throughout these interviews around the country, and you can see how important that is. And if you don't give the media these things, they don't have them. They try to do them themselves, and it doesn't work out so well. So providing these kind of simplified, even more simplified than the graphics were in the report, broadcast ready graphics is really important to do. So of course there are language issues, and this is something that I've focused on for decades. And our edit editorial team worked very closely and very iteratively with the author teams to scrub the entire report for jargon, and also to scrub for things like words that mean different things to scientists than they do to the public. These are words like enhance, which scientists use to mean increase, but to the public it means to improve or make better. So the enhanced greenhouse effect sounds like a good thing, and of course it's not. So we scrub the entire report for that. Um, if you want to see more on that subject, you can go to our website, climatecommunication.org, where my colleague Richard Somerville and I have published on this subject, and I've published on it years ago, and you can download those those articles and learn more about those words. So another thing that we did that's really important to do in a big effort like this, you know, an 800 page report is to summarize and synthesize. Working very closely with the authors, we came up with key messages for every single one of the 30 chapters. And that's a really important thing to do. But there's an art to summarizing and synthesizing. You need to be doing, looking at cross-cutting themes across the entire report. So in addition to the key messages for the 30 chapters, we also had a set of report findings, which cut across the entire report. And of course, you can read these online. You can't read them here. But what we did was then we based a highlights document around those key messages, those report findings for the entire report. And in that, we tried to trace, because for some people, they want to know where did this information come from in the full report. So here's a page from the highlights document. It's from the report finding about infrastructure. And if you look down in the lower left corner, you'll see three icons. And if we zoom in on those, you'll see that these are from the chapters on urban and infrastructure, transportation, and energy. So someone who wants to know more can go to those chapters in the report and have that traceability. We also provided traceable accounts to give more technical information about where things came from and how those, the authors came to their conclusions. Another thing that we know with, from science communication is that there are certain emotions that are more productive than other emotions when discussing climate change. And hope is one of those emotions. It's always a good idea to end with hope. So thinking about that, here are the concluding thoughts in our highlights document. And you'll see that the pull quotes and the stories of people taking action, doing things now, show that there are things we can do to tackle this problem. Another thing that's really good to do is, in this age is you have got to have a rockin' website. And we did. We had a great web development team at the Technical Support Unit, and we also engaged a wonderful company called Habitat7 in developing a, a website that did a really nice job. If you haven't been to it, I really suggest you go there. It's nca2014.globalchange.gov. And one of the things they did was it's a very up-to-the-minute website and lots of new technology, the ability to use Facebook and Twitter to share any piece of this with people in your social network. And that was, uh, I think, a really important part of what we did. So something that's often neglected in efforts like of this kind is media training. 
we knew that it was very important. The media actually really like it if you can deliver simple, clear messages to them and give them sound bites that they can quote and they can use. So what we did was we had webinars for the full author team over the week before the release. And in those webinars, we stressed many things. We, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. We also did a two-day in-person workshop in Washington right before the release for many of our authors who were there and who were going to be involved in releasing the report. They had preparation and practice in doing print interviews, radio, and television. And at the heart of all of that media training, both the webinars and the in-person training, was a discussion of the top take-home messages. The team spent a lot of time working on those messages and honing them and thinking about what are the big overarching themes that come out of this report and making sure that everyone was thinking about those themes. And here they are. I like to boil everything down to the fewest words possible so you can remember them clearly. Of course, the full messages were longer and we did a lot of wordsmithing, but basically it's this. It's happening now. It's affecting Americans, and there are lots of things we can do about it. And we really practiced that with our authors. So they were ready to talk about that message. They were ready to deliver it. This is the most comprehensive analysis ever done of climate change and its impacts in the US. And what it told us was these three things. It's happening, it's affecting us, and we can do something about it. And then, of course, each individual author used their own experience and their own expertise to flesh that out with very important concrete examples because as we know it's concrete things that people remember not abstract ones so how did we do here are some of the headlines and i think what you can see from these headlines is that it actually worked there they are climate change hits home it's happening now more than a fear it's already here we're feeling it and I've been doing this kind of work for about 25 years, and I don't think I've ever seen a better translation in the media of what we actually intended to say in a report. So I think that's some evidence that when you use all of these kinds of communication best practices, you can actually get across your message. And this is not something that our community has traditionally been very good at, but I think we did a pretty decent job with it here. Um, I'd like to encourage you all to go to the website if you haven't yet and to really utilize the resources of the National Climate Assessment in all your education and communication opportunities. Um, of course, in 12 minutes, I can't tell you everything that we did, but I've tried to hit some of the highlights. I'd also like to mention that there are a couple of video resources. Somebody asked a question earlier about videos. And one of the things that we did, they're not part of the official National Climate Assessment, but working with the story group, we developed a set of videos called Americans on the Front Lines of Climate Change. And these are short videos that tell the stories of real Americans experiencing the impacts of climate change in their lives. And that's a very effective tool. And um, you can actually find those on our website, climatecommunication.org, under videos. You can also find some other video resources that we've developed at Climate Communication. Richard Somerville, Denali Husson, and I have developed a set of narrated, animated videos where we take key graphics in climate science and give you a narrated, guided tour through those graphics. And I think you might find those very valuable resources in your education and communication opportunities. So I hope that all these will be really useful resources for you because as my colleague, the late great Steven Schneider used to like to say, we should communicate about climate change so that anyone can understand us from first graders all the way down to members of Congress. <laughs> Thank you.